I would have loved to have done the whole like six months of training where I became really sinewy and kind of tough. But also that wouldn't really be true of Elizabeth. She doesn't go to the gym every day. So if I was there like, mm, it would just be a bit of a lie really. And she eats a lot of junk food. So that's what I, in preparation, I've done no physical exercise and eaten lots of junk food. And um, I think I've achieved a really interesting <laughs> Seems physique. like you're getting into character. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Girl in the Spider's Web is the fourth installment in the Millennium series. The story features the protagonist, Elizabeth Salander, played by Claire Foy, a tech savant who uses her skills to seek vengeance on corrupt people and companies. This time around, she gets entangled with the NSA and a secret society of underground hackers, all while trying to outrun her past. Home. I sat down with the writer-director, Fetty Alvarez, and Claire Foy to see how the film came together and to learn more about what makes Elizabeth a revolutionary character. I think Elizabeth is just different. She doesn't conform to any kind of idea of what her sexuality is. She doesn't judge anyone for their sexuality. She doesn't judge anyone for their political. She doesn't, you know, have any interest in politics or the working of society. She just lives her life the way she wants to live it and doesn't really play by any of the rules that society puts on her or that we all feel we have to. I think she's someone that is, she has a really, really good heart. She really has a good sense of what's fair, which is completely different to having a sense of what's just. So there's an aspect of her that makes it fascinating. She's just, she just go after the things that she really thinks are worth fighting for. She's been so failed by every single institution that she's ever been part of, so I just think she thinks it's all nonsense, really, which is why I love her, um, and I think why other people love her. Yes. Time has moved on in the years since the books have been written and since the other movies have been made, but I think that everybody has always been interested in this character. It was a massive challenge for me, purely because it was so physical and, and it's not just stunts so much. There is a lot of stunts, but it's more the physicality kind of side of it, the physical side of coming to work and actually moving. Her inner strength is far, far greater than her physical strength, and I think that's true of most, you know, you hear those stories of people who are able to lift cars all of a sudden because their child's under it or something. It, I, that sums her up. And I sort of really identified with that, the idea that you're underestimated because of your physicality or the way you are, that people sort of think you're easy prey, but she's not. She's tough as old boots. The role of Lisbeth in The Girl in the Spider's Web is an unexpected departure from any of Claire Foy's previous characters most notably Queen Elizabeth in The Crown. How did you choose and why did you choose Claire Foy for this role? First of all, I think she's an amazing actress, right? And that was the main thing for me, to find the best actress I could for the role. And then also the fact that I wanted someone that you will think like, who? That play in this? Obviously, going from playing the Queen to this, I couldn't think of anything more apart. And that's what fun for me. On the whole, it's been, for me, it's been a different kind of process. I've found the character as I've been working more than I have in anything else I've ever done, really. Because so much of it is about being in her body and moving the way she moves and having all the stuff around her that she has. The outer world has been much more important on this than anything else I've ever done. The design is amazing and it's an amazing world that Fede has made. It's really beautiful. You spoke a little bit about Fetty Alvarez. Talk to me a little bit more about his creative process and what it was like working with him. I think Fede is really interesting. He's very musical, and so it sort of comes across in his work. He understands rhythm and how to pace a film. He's just a very instinctual director. He only knows if it works when he sees it. Uh, and everyone, I think, on it has had to work that way in the sense that if we turn up on the day and it's just not working, then you have to change it. Or if it is working and he wants to do something else, then that's what you have to do. He just, yeah, he's a bit of a genius. Fetty Alvarez has been given the reins of this franchise as both the director and writer. Known for horror films like the remake of Evil Dead and Don't Breathe, Fetty is adding even more suspense to Lisbeth's story. I think it's just this concept for me is there's a door there that is kind of ajar, and beyond that door is something very dreadful. You know, the most optimistic movies, what they say is that if you, you go ahead and you have to go and open that door because probably what's on the other side is not as bad as you think. In my movies, on the other hand, what they say is like what's on the other side is beyond what you could imagine, and it's really dark and really bad, but that you have to face it. And, and it's not until you face it that that door won't, won't exist anymore, right? And obviously, 
her fears, the things that she's terrified of, are things that I think are pretty common for the audience. It has to do with family, and she'll have to face things that, you know, that are very, very close to her. It's the right time for a new installment. Today more than ever, there's the constant threat of political manipulation, cybersecurity breaches, and espionage. When we start writing it, we're like, it's just, just people care about things. It's kind of still too, you know, hacky and, you know, tools of cybersecurity. Who cares? There was a little bit of that at the beginning. And as we, you know, we start getting deeper into the script, we start, a lot of things start happening in the world. And, and suddenly it was like, whoa, it's like straight out of the movie. It's a lot of those elements that suddenly legitimize a lot of the ideas that we thought were kind of silly in our story. It's not kind of like a sort of James Bond thing where you get a lighter pen, you know, that can kill yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah. The technology works. And the thing is, she's up on it and she uses it. And so it's pretty interesting and exciting to see someone who doesn't really care about destruction and doesn't really care about the consequences of things, really. She just does what she wants for a challenge and then realizes that she's created mayhem and goes, oh dear. When Steve Glassman wrote the books, he was writing about someone that we all sort of recognized, you know, the person who's on the fringes of society and who's identified by being part of a group that you're able to sort of dismiss and then you say that's what that person's like, but you don't know really what they're like at all. I just think that there's a new generation of people who are coming forward who have been brought up not believing that you should judge someone by what they put on the outside, like what the color of their skin is, what their sexuality is, and people are sort of throwing away stereotypes a bit. And I think, Elizabeth, you know, take away the vengeful behaviour, take away the violence and the sort of criminality of some of the things she does. At her core, she's a sort of really, just in a really accepting person. And I think um, the world could do with people who are more accepting and less judging and um, more themselves, really. <sighs> if only I could be Elizabeth. We can all be Elizabeth. 